Hello and welcome to the Nintendo Bros Podcast. This is Pete. And this is Derek. And as always, we are two brothers that talk about video games. Yes. Today is a very special day. Yes, it is. Today we got lucky enough to podcast on the same day of a Nintendo Direct. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I was driving home today because I missed it. I had to watch it a little bit on my phone. But I was driving home and I was thinking about how, I mean, Nintendo Directs really are the best parts about life. Yeah, they're uh, they're the reason I get up in the morning, basically. Yeah, I mean, like, if it's between, <laughs> like, actually seeing a movie that I'm really anticipating and having a Nintendo Direct, like, I'd rather a Nintendo Direct. Yeah, and, you know, we haven't got into today's, but I, I find they always have this, this habit or ability to... Um, they don't show what you expect, but somehow you still walk away like pleasantly surprised. Always surprised. I think one of them leaked recently, the Bayonetta one, the last one. But um, this one oh, was yeah. <laughs> totally su- tons of surprises. I can't wait to get into it. Um, do we just want to talk about our get jump right into it, Derek, or do we want to talk about our overall thoughts or what? Um, we can just jump right into it. We can talk about overall thoughts. Well, at the end, maybe. Before we get into it, uh, we only announced yesterday that, that this was happening. How hyped were you going into it? Um, it's funny, actually, I posted about this and I said, you know, normally I, I have pretty tempered expectations. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I'm excited always because I, I love Nintendo, but usually I go in thinking, you know, it's, it's going to be a dud with maybe one kind of big trailer. Um, but for some reason in my body, I was just like, you know, th- this one's going to be good. And uh, I, I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, you told me it was a, uh, you'd give it a 9.4, which is, I was, wow. Um, are you still that high on it? Uh, it probably settled a bit lower, maybe down to like a nine, but or maybe a high eight. But uh, okay, still, that's like, a big drop. That's a big drop. Well, yeah, I just mean, well, I, I still think it's one of the best Nintendo directs in a long, long time. I agree. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, th- there were some to get to that nine or nine point five status. They've got to drop some of those bigger games that we didn't see. Yeah, um, we can talk yeah. about that later. On the, well, let's, yeah. get, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So um, it opened up with this uh, Fire Emblem game. Probably not the Fire Emblem game people expected. This looks like a sequel to the last Fire Emblem Warriors, right? From Tecmo Koe, like the Musou game, the Warriors game. Yeah, it's, it's almost the same thing as... I would relate it to um, Age of Calamity, how Age of Calamity is focused specifically on Breath of the Wild. This game is focused specifically on the uh, Three Houses. I Fire see. That's Switch. why it's called Three Hopes. Yeah, it's it's all the characters are from the Three Houses. Yeah, so you're the bigger Fire Emblem fan here. How, how do you feel about this? How do the Fire Emblem fans feel about this? Um, I think people are actually expecting to see a, a new Fire Emblem game. That's what um, I thought, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I think this is actually the one, the, one of the longest periods that we've gone without seeing a new Fire Emblem since uh, they started kind of becoming more, more mainstream with Awakening. Um, so people are surprised by that. And I, I have a feeling, even though Age of Calamity's people loved, some people really hated the frame rate issue and some of the other kind of problems mm-hmm. that came with that. Mm-hmm. And I think people are hesitant because this could be that same kind of issue where, you know, it's almost more than the Switch can handle. It looked okay in the trailer, though. I mean, it looked yeah, like it's it the looked, best it o- looking one yet. Truthfully. Yeah, it looked okay. I, again, I... I'm still skeptical because. Did you play Fire feel- Emblem Warriors the, on Switch? I didn't. It, again, it never went on sale, and I, for me, it's just it's too much to jump in on. Because um, I thought I think that one runs quite a bit better than. I mean, Age of Calamity is notoriously bad. I think Hyrule right. Warriors and the Fire Emblem Warriors both ran well. And I think Age of Calamity's ran not well at all. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't really know how this one's going to be, but. Um, Hopefully that's something they ironed out. I'm just, you know what I figure is that, you know, this one, the fire, the first Fire Emblem Warriors on Switch sold about 1 million. Age of Calamity sold 4 million. It just, I find it's not a super successful. I'm, I'm actually surprised they did make this game. Um, but I guess with all the assets already made, it wasn't that hard. You know what I mean? It's not like they're going yeah, to, I, back to the back to the drawing board, like doing a Kirby Warriors game. Like they're just kind of taking what they already kind of built on with Fire Emblem Warriors already, and maybe they're just improving it. And I got to say, like, some of the stuff with the um, the, u- the user interface and, the it, like, it kind of has some map stuff going on. It reminds me of um, the original Hyrule Hy- Warriors, and I like that kind of stuff. And it looks like it kind of ties into Fire Emblem a little bit, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it'll be good um, for those that like it. And I, I agree with you, you know, I think these Mushu games, not that they're bad, but they are easier to make 
rapidly because you know you have you have like maybe like 10 enemies and you just duplicate them a thousand times and i'm sure the move sets if you if you looked at all the dynasty warrior games and the these four nintendo games i'm sure some of like the even like the the moves will look very similar between each other mm-hmm. um so I, I don't know um how different or awesome this game will be i, I think it it'll be good for me personally even though i love fire emblem um three houses was not my favorite fire emblem game i didn't really like it that much at all so for like i'm not excited usually the the thing that would get me excited about fire emblem warriors would be the characters that i really like but this game doesn't really have those i do wonder though if this is just like last time with fire emblem warriors before three houses this is a warm-up for the next fire emblem like this comes out in june then they announce the uh in in e3 they announce another fire emblem coming out you know early next year that, that's yeah. very possible. I can see that. Happening okay. Intelligent too, systems is still working on something, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there, there, there's definitely. I mean, there, there's so many rumors about a, a Fire Emblem remake or even a new game um, that I'd be shocked if we went through this year without seeing or hearing about a new one. Yeah. Well, you never know. I mean, we, we might be talking about the Metroid Prime trilogy for Switch Pro in ten years and saying it's going to be for sure announced this time. You know, <laughs> it's, it's funny. Funny enough, I'm just going to add this tidbit. I just read that. Um, the silicon wafers that are used in chips have been fully like ordered or booked until 2026. So they say like, well, you know, if you're expecting a, a switch change up by then, they've already like a new revision. They've already planned it. You know what I mean? So it's just it's just interesting that that we have such a ship chip uh, or wafer shortage that could uh, cause some interesting effects over the next five years. So you're saying that we might be stuck with a switch without a switch pro for years. I don't know how it all, how that all works. I'm just saying, you know, if you think about the the PlayStation Five shortage and the Xbox Series X shortage, and you know, I don't know if there's a Switch shortage or what their plans are in the future. But let's just say all of the stock for the these um, these wafers that go in all electronics, including Apple, are back ordered until 2026. Wow. Are, are back ordered until 2026. Well, they, they must have plans. But anyways, let's get back into the the topic at hand, which is the direct. Yeah. And you know what? If Switch is going to go for another five years, I might just be okay with that after today's presentation. Because I'm telling you, the next two years, I'm stoked for. Exactly. So let's move on from Fire Emblem Warriors. We're both going to pass on that. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp uh, coming on April 8th finally got an announcement and also got a really nice trailer. They showed that it has full voice acting, online play, create maps. It actually looks really, really good. What do you think, Dirk? Yeah, I thought the features, uh, they really showed it off well this time. And... Um, Again, I, I'm someone that doesn't really love the Advanced Wars um, game style. Hmm. Um, I, I can tell you why, how it's different to me than Fire Emblem, but it just doesn't fully jive with me. I would pick this up if it was forty dollars. If I could find a used copy on sale, I, it I would is. Love to it play isn't it. full price. Just FYI, it's not. Okay, 70, it's not seventy nine ninety nine. I don't believe. Okay, so that that might tempt me a bit better. Again, we'll see. Like, I think it looks great. I'm not criticizing the game at all, just for me personally. But yeah, I agree. The, I the thought you'd be all great. over this because I know you like these kind of puzzle, you know, strategy, you know, games. I, I like the strategy games like Fire Emblem, where you have unique characters getting upgrades and all that kind of stuff. And I do like these, you know, tactical games like Triangle Strategy, or whatever. But um, I found with this game or the indie game War Groove, um, where you're like collecting re- like money and you're purchasing your units, and you it's kind of like your units just keep dying. That's not really my kind of game. Like I, I want my my units to feel stronger than the enemy, and like I have to use all of their abilities to to be overpowered. I see. As opposed, okay. to, as opposed to like I don't like the idea that my units are the same units the enemy has, and it's just it's like playing chess. You know, I prefer where it's my units are unique and they're like super strong if you use them correctly. I see. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, maybe you're gonna skip. I, I'm. I'm looking at it. Um, I'm a maybe. I'm a maybe. I think it's gonna do well though. I mean, I think it's gonna do relatively well and you know critically as well. So yeah, it's a good one to look yeah. out for. And it, um, mm-hmm. I'm glad it has online play and stuff too because that might add a whole other element that the originals yeah, never had. That was the thing I, that um, excited me the most, is that online play looks really cool. Mm-hmm. It only takes like one mode in these games to really hook me. And um, there's something I'll talk about later with respect to that. But uh, anyways, um, next they showed off No Man's Sky coming for in summer 2022. And uh, I looked up, it looks like this is not a cloud version. Hmm. Um, which blew me away, because they always say whether it's a cloud version or not. And they didn't for this. And... I looked online and it doesn't say anything about it being a cloud version, and it's pretty impressive that they're getting this running on Switch. 
Like, that's almost the only reason that a five-year-old game would be in this direct. But there's no way this game can be played uh, offline, right? Yes, of course it can. I thought the whole point of this game was that it was in a giant universe procedurally generated, but it was no. all con- connected. No, basically, like, you go to a planet, and it's like a random generator makes it. Yeah, but, it, it's, but that planet, other people can go to. Well, it's but it's not as connected as you think. It's not like they can go to you and you can see them there. It wasn't well, at least no, when I, 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 I played the original. They, I know, but they the, all the, with all the updates, like you, it's a totally different game. I think that's what the original was, and they got all that flack for it. But now that that it's a way more connected. I couldn't tell you. I uh, maybe, maybe, but I mean, impressive nonetheless. Yeah, I, I mean, it looks cool. Again, I'm not, I'm not personally interested in this kind of game, but. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, it looks like my kind of game, and I got really excited when it first came out on PS4, and I did play it. Um, but I just can't. Even after all the updates, something about it, I just it's like it's I think, like I think t- you'd have to give it another chance, Peter, because the, there's monumental changes to the game. I know there is. I just um, you know, it burned me once, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I bought that's, it. On, I bought it on launch, right? That's not <laughs> like, the expression, but yeah, it burned me once. <laughs> I know. It's, <laughs> it's a new expression. Um, okay, the next one. Um, it's funny how these announcements. Like, wh- who thinks of the order of these announcements? I have no idea. But the next or, thing, or just like, like imagine what is still in the pipeline. Like again, think of all the games that were rumored, or games that we have like heard inklings about, or games we already know. And they said, "Oh yeah, let's drop these games on this direct." <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's well, it's the, it's the games coming until uh, they pretty much stuck to it. It's up until summer and j- in September included. Like no, I just 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 a interesting lineup is all I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean they didn't really seem to show anything from. Ne- well, anyways, let's, let's talk about the overall laughter. The next thing they showed was Mario Strikers Battle League, and um, this looks really cool. You can, I mean, it's Mario Strikers basically, but you have you can kind of upgrade each each character. Um, uh, can you? Yeah, you can like not upgrade, but you can choose like their outfit, like their mech mecha outfit. Which, yeah, 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 which yeah, yeah. Uh, can... kind of gives them different customization, which is kind of a neat little thing. But um, yeah, I mean, overall, I, I did get a little bit worried that this is going to be full of gimmicks because it's got all sorts of them in this one now. Like it's power shots and weapons and I don't I, know. I felt the exact opposite. But at the same time, I think it looks awesome and I think it's a 10 million seller. And um, what do you think, Derek? Yeah, I, I feel very different than you. I, I think this game's going to be great and I, I sell well and I, I'm, I'm getting it day one. Um, wow, wow. Oh, 100%. I'll tell you why um, for a reason you mentioned a second ago. Um, but the the one on Wii I loved, and it had items, and it had all these characters with different power-ups and different shots, and it even had something that was more broken that's, than what's in this game. So in the Wii version, you could do a, a charge shot, and you could do sh- six shots in one and get six goals. In this game, it seemed like the most... You, it's, yeah, do you, have, you remember That's that? ridiculous. I do remember that, yeah. And you had an well, you aim to yeah, you block aim. the shots. Yeah. yeah, and this game is a two max, so it looks like it's a lot more balanced where even the most strong, most powerful shot, you can overcome your opponent just by playing well. Hmm. Um, so that interests me. Um, but the reason I really want to get this is it has eight-player single couch co-op or couch play i know that's wild that's, that that's my number one reason i get this because i have at least four buddies five buddies that will play this and i can probably wrangle another three and how freaking awesome would it be to be four on four and then switch up the teams like just keep switching up the teams that mm-hmm. sounds amazing to me yeah i wish i had that many friends but there is online play so that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can play with the, the strangers. You know what I thought was interesting was that you know we kind of you can kind of predict this game was coming because the others were so successful and you know next level games finished on Luigi's Mansion three. So we know that like next level games probably developed this. I don't mm-hmm. know if that's official yet, but I mean it's not it's not confirmed. I don't think it, I was looking for that too. But Nintendo owns them now, so I think it's one of those things where they don't really need to say next level games made this. There's like we here's another game we made. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was interesting. I feel like before they bought them, they may have mentioned, and eh, from next level games, yada, yada, yada. But now they're kind of like, and here's this. Yeah. Um, interesting little note. But yeah, this is going to be huge, I think. this is. I mean, uh, and it seems like they're really on a every year with a new Mario sports game, which is a smart way to go. Like next year should be baseball. Yeah, I heard someone else uh, mention that too. I never played the baseball game. That, it was on the GameCube, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never played that. But yeah. It was I, on I the Wii too. Oh, There's I love I love Striker. So um, 
for again, Mario Golf and, and uh, Mario Tennis for me on the Switch didn't interest me, but this one really does. So I'm excited to uh, hopefully it lands well. It looks like it will. And the animation yeah. and everything looks really good. And there's a difference between next level games making it and Camelot making it. Not that I don't like Camelot, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that comes on June 10th, which I thought was interesting because, you know, between June, April, and June are looking packed. But, uh, you know, we'll talk about the overall lineup at the end. Yeah, I have a, an ordered list. Uh, so next they showed off Splatoon 3, which was kind of, a, in my opinion, not a great thing to show off. Uh, they basically kind of said, yeah, Salmon Run is back, and it kind of looks, yes, there's a new stage and a few new enemies, but it's, it's just not really the kind of thing that I think gets someone you know, off the fence to buy it. <laughs> you know, uh, What do you think? Well, um, I agree. I, I think it was not the greatest showing, and, you know... I go on both sides because one, Salmon Run was my favorite mode in that yeah. game. If there's any reason for me to to get, Salmon I'm so Run, happy it's back. Game. You know, at the same time, I'm so happy it's back and it's a day one game for me. But you know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> but I uh, totally. But I like like you just said. You know, if you're gonna show Splatoon three multiple times, you gotta show something new. Like the shows, mm-hmm. like they've they've again, Splatoon great franchise. But if they're making it a sequel to Splatoon two. I want more than just new maps, you know, like show me something. And I know there's going to be a campaign. They haven't really talked about it, but I just mean, I'm really, I have a little bit of worry that they're just kind of milking Splatoon again, even though they could have just added more to Splatoon 2. Um, but I, I hope there's new things and that they're just showing us the, the baseline. And then, you know, in a couple of months, they'll show us the, um, the new stuff to Splatoon 3. Cause right now it's like, great. It's more Splatoon, but I'm looking for more. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a it wasn't a paradigm shift of a sequel kind of thing. It was kind of it was more like, oh yeah, you have a few new enemies and a few new things. And I I really hope that the main game isn't just hey here's some new uh, weapons and here's some new stages. I really hope That's they a, have a big uh, paradigm, completely new modes, uh, and maybe a really really significant campaign, maybe some sort of co op. I don't know, but they they really need to rethink, give it something really fresh. Hmm. Which I do think they will, because it seems to be Nintendo's pe- like pattern recently to really show how amazing the game is, you know, close to, to it coming out. Yeah. Um, after that, they showed a Front Mission uh, first remake coming in the summer and a Front Mission two remake. Um, these are also coming to every other system; just they're not exclusive. But these are the first time first time it's been announced. Um, I don't know. It looks cool. I don't, is it your kind of game, Derek? Again, it looks like another tactical kind of strategy game. Um, this one looked too slow paced for me, and I don't, I'm not a big mech person. Like I've just never been into those kind of Gundam mech pilot kind of games, so it doesn't agree. do much for me. Yeah, yeah, me neither. Um, so let's move on. Uh, next was <laughs> Disney Speedstorm coming in the summer, free to play kart racing game. Uh, this is one caught Vanessa's eye. She said she was into that. She wanted to try it, and I said, "Well, it's free." You know, really? Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, I, it's free. I guess I'd give it a chance if it, if it people liked it. But for me, one free to play worries me, and two, when they say every hero or every driver has their own abilities, I can already realize that this game's going to be littered with you know the one or two balance problems. Yeah, yeah. And there's going to have like the one guy that has like the super turbo, and everyone's going to use him to spam like. So and you know what it'll be? It'll be like, hey, the game is free. You get to race on this one track until you get fifty thousand coins, and then you unlock track two. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no exactly. Uh, so after that, they showed um, a series of kind of like game uh, bringing back some old collections. Um, well, uh, one of them being Star Wars: The Force Unleashed, which was a Wii, uh, PS2, PS3 kind of series game. Mm-hmm. This might actually be good because this was a really cool game and it has motion controls, which I thought was a cool touch. Um, and the the Force Unleashed on Wii was apparently the what some people say is the, was the best version of the game. Just oh. because of the controls, and, and it, was, it was just a well-made game. So, I don't know. If this one's cheap at some point, these Star Wars games get really, really cheap. And they're, I love how they're releasing all of them. Like, you can get Pod Racer, you can get Jedi Knight. And, yeah, it's cool um, to have that kind of Star Wars collection on, on one system. Yeah, I really, really hope that, like, the Rogue Squadrons and um, Shadows of the Empire come. I mean, that'd yeah, be another, I'm a little surprised that the, the GameCube Rogue Squadron isn't. You know, it was, like, kind of a perfect game... Especially when they're not really pushing out Star Fox, like put well, that game on. That developer is bankrupt and went out of business. So, yeah, but someone's got to own that rights. I, I think it was like a bad breakup between Star Wars and the company was Factor Five. 
Mm. So I don't know if that's the... I think there was a bad bad blood in that involvement. Hmm. Um, anyways, after that, they showed Assassin's Creed, the Ezio Collection, which at this point, they have a lot of Assassin's Creed games on Switch. Yeah. Which is funny. Like, in a different heyday of the Wii era, that would have been something that, you know... Every podcaster and yeah. every everyone on message boards would be like, oh, yeah, you know, Nintendo just needs to get games like Assassin's Creed. Uh, and now they have all of them. <laughs> <laughs> not all of them. Not, not, the, not the last, like, what, seven? Not Valhalla. Yeah. Yeah, they only have the first nine, not the last 12. <laughs> I think it's like they actually have, like, the first nine, not the last three or whatever. Like, I think they have almost all of them. They, oh, yeah. And this is three of them, another three. Um... I'm surprised they're able to get them all to run on Switch so well. I mean, like the footage didn't look great though. It looked pretty, pretty low resolution. Twenty to thirty frame, yeah. Yeah, comes on February seventeenth. That's like tomorrow. Next, that's next week. Yeah, yeah it's real <laughs> soon. How can they keep that quiet? Um, okay, uh, I'm not gonna get this. Are you? I'm not. I don't no. like. I don't I, like Assassin's Creed. I can play one Assassin's Creed every five years when I forget that I don't like them, and then I restart that cycle. Yeah, I mean, I just don't like them straight up. Uh, I've only played two, and I, I like the ones I played. I played the uh, Black Flags, because I thought it was cool to use the ship and be a pirate. And I played the one in e- uh, Origins, because I thought Ancient Egypt was really cool to explore. Hmm. Well, yeah. good good for you. <laughs> <laughs> you wasted 100 hours of your life. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't 100% them. <laughs> I just platinum them uh, in a weekend. Um <laughs> So after that, we were shown a really awesome game, SD Gundam Battle Alliance. Now, this is like what, from a PlayStation remake? I uh, were you serious about it being awesome? No. Um, okay. I, I, I like skimmed over it because I didn't care at all. Yeah, I think this is a, a remake of a PlayStation game. Um, you know, there's probably someone out there who's really excited about this. I don't know. Um, yeah. The guy yeah, I'm, in, I'm like I'm sure there's people that love Gundam for one, and you know we're we're Western centric. Who knows how Japan is finding this game, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. watch it be like a huge seller. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, they showed Chrono Cross, the Radical Dreamers edition, which is also coming to other consoles, which I thought was kind of interesting because this was a big PlayStation game back in the day, a uh, huge RPG, and it was a follow up to Chrono Trigger. Like a spiritual so, sequel. So two questions that you'll probably know the answer to is one: Is Chrono Trigger already on the Switch? No, I don't think so. Not I mean not on the not on the uh, Nintendo uh, Super Nintendo online Nintendo Switch Online. App. Okay, yeah, yeah. So the last time you, you could play was the 3DS or DS. Oh, sorry, DS. Yeah, I'm pretty and, and, and PS4. I think it's on PlayStation. You can download it. And um, my other question is: What is the Radiant Dreamers part of it? Cause someone said, "Oh, this includes the Radiant Dreamers," or or like, what is that? I have no idea. Okay. Um, I have no idea. But it looked like it was up um, Yeah, it which still looked pretty fuzzy. I mean, it looked like pretty a... Pretty jaggedy. What's it called? It's it's a remaster, not a remake. Yeah, yeah. definitely not a remake. I, I don't know. I'm so confused on what the differences are now. Because uh, like, there's a remake, there's a remaster, and then there's like an HD report. Um, yeah, there's a port, which is this the game in an, on the new console. But then, what is it? Yeah, what is it called up-rest. when you just upres it? Though is that a yeah, is that yeah, a remaster? That, yeah, it, um, a remaster usually they went, go in and actually like fix up things. But I mean, uh, like, was Super Mario Galaxy on Switch? Nintendo, you know, on uh, Mario that's Three a, also. That's not, a, that's not a remaster. Even that's though just, it was HD, that's just an upres. Okay. Well, uh, this I'm looks... assuming, I, but like a remaster is when they actually go in and, and fix things, and then a remake is like Resident Evil Two remake, where it's like the game is a different game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, um, this looks like a pretty traditional port then, but like an but an HD upres port. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I'm not really not really my thing. I th- I think this game is supposed to be really good, but it, I don't know. I kind of I, I bought Final Fantasy IX on Switch and I fell off, so I'm just not my kind of game. Yeah, like for me, it's it's interesting because I do like picking up the JRPG once in a while, and you know everyone loves Chrono Trigger, and I heard a lot of good things about um, this game as well. Um, but I'm worried that it's just old or too old for me to actually engage with it. Cause like there's so many more quality of life changes in modern games now that I don't know if that game will hold up when I play yeah. it. Well, hopefully yeah. they'll do some of the, uh, quality of life changes they did to the final fantasy, um, 
up-resed ports for Switch where they allow you to like fast forward and and kind of things like that. Like you can fast forward dialogue, um, little things, mm-hmm. and fast forward battle specifically. Yeah, and you can turn off random encounters. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, it was some nice stuff. I'm probably not going to buy this because I will definitely be buying uh, the next game they showed, which was Kirby in the Forgotten Land, a Nether trailer. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, coming on March 25th, another reminder. They showed some new, mo- new even new, even newer ideas. Than I can't believe they've been hiding this this concept until now. I don't know uh, which one you're talking about, but both of them were uh, both new things they showed were awesome to me. Well, the main new thing they showed was that he, or, sorry, Kirby. Uh, I don't know what's a he or she. Uh, Kir- <laughs> they Kirby's an alien, I think. Yeah, Kirby. No, that, no gender. Uh, Kirby can suck up like a car or giant items and then basically warp into that giant item, which looks like a really cool mechanic, almost a little bit like uh, Kirby Robobot with some of those uh, upgrades. Yeah, what's that? What's the power called? Mor- morph something or morph mode? Uh, I can't remember. Um, no, they, had a, they, just, they had a name for it. They had a but name yeah, for it. Yeah. It looks cool. It looks like there could be some interesting puzzles with it. It looks like it'll be. It looks like it'll almost have a Mario like mechanic where you, the power ups just you know are all over the place. It's like there was yeah, one like area Mario where f- there's an area where you were flying. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of cool stuff. Um, yeah, it looks like again this game is going to be one of those has endless amounts of ideas. Um, this this trailer is the one that convinced me that this game is going to do way better than I expected, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm a, I'm a day one too. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, the other feature that I just because the i'm an rpg kind of guy the town it is not just the town but the upgrading your abilities mm-hmm, i love that, that. It looks freaking cool like to be able to have all these abilities look way way stronger is like sign me up for that mm-hmm. so, yeah. i wonder if you can only equip a few at a time though or how that'll work or once you i, I think you upgrade it and then when you find it in the in the world that becomes when you suck that enemy up instead of getting the, the st- level one of the power up you get the level two or the level okay. three that's yeah, what I think. I'm really stoked on this. I feel like this is going to be that, um, you know, Ocarina of Time, Super Mario 64, Metroid Prime kind of 3D moment to- for totally. Kirby. Totally. Uh, I can see it getting as high as 98 on, on Metacritic. I know you're joking. I'm just kidding. I, I could see it getting a high 80s, though, for sure. Can you imagine if it actually, like, you just woke up one morning and... and just, people were just like, this is the this is the best Switch game. And just it like, you, you, the wild. Like, you go to Metacritic and it's like 97. <laughs> Because there's like reviewers that said we had to go, we had to go back and retroactively lower our Ma- Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild scores <laughs> because this game is so much better. Or something. It's like, <laughs> well, I can, you know, it's it sounds crazy, but I can see it getting like 92 to 94, like in a perfect that's world. That's too, too high for me. I think I think high 80s is reasonable. Yeah. yeah, same. I mean, that's what I predicted, but yeah, it looks really good. Like it looks yeah, tri- I mean, triple I, A. I totally totally agree. I, I'm like, I think they. This is going to sell like gangbusters. I think people are going to love it. It's going to review well. And I think this is like the path forward for Kirby. Mm-hmm. And um, it's kind of interesting just because, you know, Pokemon Arceus came out last week. Um, Sold 6.5 you know, million in a week. <laughs> I know. And, and neither of us got it. And I have friends that did get it and they, they thought it was amazing. My friend said, got it and he raved about it to me. me. My friend too. And he said, you know, this is the, this is the way Pokemon should go. Um, so I just, it's kind of interesting, you know, they talked about this is being, I, I read something, someone saying it, this is the renaissance of Pokemon. And yeah, it's I saw interesting that. I, I think that, you know, maybe that's Kirby too. Maybe this is a year of like a lot of these IPs are going to come out and just kind of change their formula up enough to be like really, really fresh and cool. Yeah. Like I think this is the year that Mario Strikers becomes like a huge Mario Party, like sizable mm-hmm. franchise as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also, I think this Kirby has tons of potential to be like the big one. I agree. Yeah, and like I could see Star Fox Adventures two coming out, you know. <laughs> Same Eternal Darkness. <laughs> yeah. You know, at this point, you just never know because you know a lot of these announcements are going in line with my what I was saying last last uh, episode was that Nintendo's really on this streak of announcing games and having them ready months later. Mm-hmm. And it's super impressive that they are able to have all these games ready in such a short amount of time uh, when we're still waiting for you know certain games from Microsoft for twenty years. I know. Actually, like I just love that about Nintendo, right? They don't yeah. need to have four and a half years of us seeing one trailer a year. They can say, "Hey, we got a new game coming out in three months." Like even Kirby was not announced that long ago. Yeah, it was announced in the fall. Yeah. So there's a lot. I, I like that that style. It's, it just shows confidence, and and they should like their games are looking good each time. Mm-hmm. 
Um, after that, they kind of had an interesting little commercial for MLB The Show, uh, which is the Sony former Sony exclusive baseball game, Sony published, uh, which is now coming to Switch. So this is good. I mean, it actually looked okay. Like it's it's if you want portable baseball, this is going to be the best way to play it. For sure. Uh, other other than the um, what's it called? The uh, what's that other? I don't know. I, I don't care about baseball video games <laughs> even a little bit. <laughs> I mean, okay. You're not buying this day one? Heck no. It is funny though that the Switch now is going to have X- Microsoft published games and Sony published games. And Nintendo published games. And it's Nintendo. Exactly. It's the only one that'll have all three. <laughs> <laughs> but it won't have EA. <laughs> That's true. I guess Nintendo published games will never come to other systems, eh? I, I mean, I'm maybe. I think, like, would they ever put, like. You never uh, know. You never yeah. know, right? One day everything will be streaming. Totally. One one box made by Microsoft, and then everyone else will just be putting games on it. And everyone will just be in like a warm tube of liquid, and they'll just look at the screen all day. <laughs> you went so far off the deep end of that one. <laughs> Time of video game like okay. streaming services. <laughs> well, speaking of streaming, the next announcement was Kingdom Hearts Integrum, um, which is completely a cloud-based uh, trilogy of games. I heard it's really expensive. Coming February 10th, um, I don't know, just the name Integrum Masterpiece sounds weird to me. Uh, are you going to buy this day one, Derek? Um, first off, Kingdom Hearts always have terrible, weird naming systems. True, true. Um, and no, I, I will never probably play a Kingdom Heart game again. Um, yeah, you Kingdom don't, Hearts, I know, you didn't like three. three. Yeah, I just had such a bad experience. Uh, it's just not my game. I don't love stories in games anyways, so yeah, but Kingdom Hearts 3, like, they're, the gameplay's terrible, also. I'm a hard pass. Hmm. Yeah, I, this is a weird one. I mean, like, why do the old... I mean, we, we can talk about this before, but it's really a shame that they couldn't get the older Kingdom Hearts to actually run on the Switch. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like, you know, you, some kid's going to buy this trilogy and be like, great, I can play it on my vacation, and he's going to get in the car, and he's not going to be able to play any of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. So it's gonna be a terrible vacation for that kid. <laughs> um, after that, though, they did show another one in um, Klonoa Fantasy Rivery series, which I haven't. I, I mean, I haven't really had time to actually look up any of these games and what they include. But I think this is a remastering or upres re-release of some older Klonoa games. Do you know yeah, any more I, about this? I don't really know a Klonoa at all. It looks like a platformer. You might know better than I would, but it seems like people online are excited for this to be brought. I, again, I don't know anything about this franchise. I, I know nothing. It was just a high-quality 2D, uh, 2.5D platformer on the PlayStation, and I believe they had a, a pretty good game on PS2, and then another good game on Wii. So it's like a trilogy of these Klonoa games that um, they've always been good. They've just always sold really, really poorly. Hmm. So... I don't know. This is one of those things where I'll pr- I will probably grab this if it's cheap. I, I'm more into this kind of 2D platformer than I am uh, ukulele. Kirby. No, ukulele as a 2D platformer, 2.5D. Because I really... Uh, this, it's just, I like the simplicity of it, right? You kind of sit down, turn your brain off, play through it. I don't like how ukulele, you have to go redo levels and explore them and get upgrades to unlock new levels. I, that annoys Definitely me. Ukulele, like the first one or the impossible layer? The impossible layer. Mm-mm. I don't know. I know you never played that. But it's just kind of a brains off uh, platformer is what I'm into. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, that's, why, that's why you like Psychonauts. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, after that was Portal Champion, a uh, companion collection, which is Portal One and Two. For Switch, it's about time. Yeah, <laughs> you know? this is this is for me one of the few um, like I don't want to say indie, but like download games that I actually might get. Um, I've played all these games, but it'd be nice to have these on a portable. I think it'd be awesome. I agree. Um, I played a little bit of it on PS3, I think, and just to have them again uh, would be a lot of fun. And you play online, too, so it might be something fun to play, you and I together or something, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I I also think it's kind of interesting because I don't think Valve has released a game on a Nintendo platform in a very long time. Maybe since the DS. What came out on the DS? Uh, I don't know, but I'm just throwing that <laughs> out there. I guess. had to guess it. I had to guess it was the, the DS because I can't remember anything else. Um, so, why would you guess at all then? Well, let's look it up. 
Uh, <laughs> I just, yeah, just a funny way. Yeah, so, um, have you played all the Portal games? Uh, I've played a little bit of number two. I never played the first one. Okay, okay. The first yeah, one's single good. player only, I think. Yeah, it's single player. And the second one's single player and co-op, and they're different, different games. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It really, to be to be honest, this one really depends on price. I wonder if they'll go for a full price or or, or what. But if it's like twenty nine or something, that's kind of the we're all we're all hit. Yeah, I would again. It'd just be nice to have in the collection because you never know when you're with a buddy, and this the co op would be a fun thing. Just like oh, you're you know waiting for a bus or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and like you know, if someone next to you is trying to play their Kingdom Hearts. They won't be yeah, able to, and then you'll be yeah, able to play Portal with them. <laughs> they need something to do, exactly. Yeah. Uh, after this, they showed uh, Live a Live, which is, I don't even, what are one of the worst titles I think I've ever heard. Um, I don't even I know, know I what this is. I thought it was supposed to be Live a Life. Because yeah. If you talk, if you talk about the, what the game's about, I thought it was Live a Life. <laughs> I thought it was Live A, and the other one was a reflection. It was some sort of, I don't, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't even know what this is. It's like a, a compilation of stories told through it, it, games. It looks like, um, so as far as what I saw when I watched it, it was basically, there's like six stories on, at different times. And you pick which one you start with, or you pick the order that you do them. And I think the story connects, and w- the order you do do them changes things. Because I think there's like a time demon probably that jumps through the different eras. Um, but it, it gave me a lot of Chrono Trigger vibes. Um, it just looks like kind of a a, a nice looking fun uh, a game. So this actually is again high on my list of a game to download. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, it comes in, in July. Uh, I don't think it's exclusive, but I think this is the first time it was announced. Oh, I think I think you're actually wrong. I think Live a Live is exclusive. It's not even being brought to the PC. Wow, really? I, I have to double check that. But I, I think someone. I thought I was reading about it. Usually, where, they say if it's um, you know. I know, but I thought I, I thought they looked at the bottom and it, like of the the title card or whatever, and it didn't say any other systems, including PC. Let me see what I can Okay, find. well, it's a, I think there's a history here because I think it's Live a Live is actually an older game series and that's now being brought back. It's from 1994. Um, but this must be a remaster of some kind or a remake. I'm not sure. But but anyways, um, you look it up. But in the meantime, I'll talk about their next announcement, which to me was probably their biggest, one of their biggest announcements. And that was Nintendo Switch Sports. Which oh, is yeah, this looks cool. Kind of like a sequel to Wii Sports, which I, I've always said they should bring back. And I actually guessed, I probably guessed a few E3 guesses with you where I've said they're going to bring out Switch Sports. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I think I have actually. Yeah. So they finally have, and it's coming out in April uh, pretty soon, like two months away. Yeah. It looks really good. Yeah, it does. I I, um, I already checked online, so it's a reduced price, which is good. Cause I, I mean, I, I was curious about what they were going to price it because I know we. Wii Sports was free, so it was just kind of like, oh, is this going to be a seventy nine ninety nine or is it going to be a twenty dollar game? Um, it's cheaper than one two Switch. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's fifty bucks Canadian, which isn't. I mean, it's not great, but it's not terrible. Thirty nine ninety nine American. Yeah. So as long as they keep putting on, uh, if they, if they put some free DLC games like they are with golf, they put a few more. Um, this would be a good deal, and I think this game is going to sell disgustingly well. Um, especially, you know, COVID, especially because it has online and couch co-op. Like, I, I think this is going to just do insanely well. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's, what's interesting is, I'm just speculating here, but the, you know, with the soccer, they talk about the leg strap. Mm-hmm. So that's the same leg strap that comes with the ring fit. The, the physical edition uh, they mentioned comes with the leg strap. I know, but I'm just, I'm just thinking now. Oh, like now that people will have one of these leg straps, I'm betting they're going to start implementing maybe games with two leg straps. Like, I, I'm I'm curious if the if the next Ring Fit, because I'm sure Ring Fit Two will come out eventually, if they have two leg straps and what they can do with that. You know, like there's some cool hmm. ideas there. I think that I don't know. I'm just speculating, but just just interesting. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool to use the leg strap. Um, but I mean, I'm more interested in the tennis and the bowling. And they kind of they kind of showed an, an online, a quick little version of the online play in bowling. And you're playing in like with 16 other players, uh, and it's kind of like a it looks like an elimination mode. Looks really looked good. Yeah, it, lo- it all looked really cool. Yeah, and this- even the even the new games are kind of fun. Like volleyball looks pretty fun. Mm-hmm. The only one I was disappointed is no archery because that was one of my favorites. 
archery. Oh, yeah. that was in that was in the the second one, right? The Wii U one. The uh, sports resort. Or sorry, yeah, the Motion Plus one. Yeah. Yeah, um, but the avatars looked a little weird, and um, but you can use Mies. It's been okay. reported. Um, and the backgrounds, I thought, looked really good. Like, really well-done backgrounds and yeah, user looks, interface. And like, it looks well-polished and stuff. Like, a, no complaints at all. I just, I don't know. You know, I think this is for the casual people. And the, I mean, you know, for me, it's like, okay, I, I get it. It's nice to have. But I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm probably going to get it. Yeah, I, I mean, I probably will, too. Just cause It's a game that, again, if you think about Vanessa or Sarah, like, our girlfriends, like, that's the game that they would probably want to play, and I could bring it to Sarah's family's house, and they would all play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's the kind of thing where I, uh, someone mentioned that eventually they'll be able to pack it in with the the Switch, and like you know maybe sell a white Switch with it packed in, which would be huge. Oh yeah, that's smart. I mean, think about that. Uh, so yeah, hopefully they keep adding sports to it because there's tons they could. Even like when they had frisbee and frisbee golf, like I love that on on uh, Wii Sports Resort. Mm-hmm. They're in kayaking, and I mean some of those are throwaway. Um, the funny thing is with the volleyball, seeing the you know the, the two Nintendo guys playing it, um, like I, maybe one of these games will be like a runaway banger, you know, and maybe the volleyball's it because mm-hmm. it looked pretty cool how they had. I mean, it looks like one of the best ways to play volleyball in a video game ever. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, it almost looks like you can actually emulate the motions and, and get what you want, you know. Yeah. So I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much a day one on this. Uh, <laughs> after that, they showed uh, Taiko no Tetsujin uh, Rhythm Festival, um, which is a drum-based game. I, I thought at first this was going to be like a Rhythm Heaven tie-in, which it, I don't think it is. I don't think so either, no. This is like a drumming game. I, like, yeah. There's, there's only two things you can do. It's like a, you can hit the middle or hit the side. It's kind of a weird... But is there a drum accessory or do you like do you have to import it from Japan or what? I, I thought there was, but I bet you can do it with a controller or just a Joy-Con or something weird. I, I, I haven't looked too much into it because the moment I found out this is like a rhythm game with only two different like notes... Inputs, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't interest me at all. I, I'm really surprised that this uh, gets localized... <laughs> you know and like i don't know yeah you, no you're right it's like a very japanese-esque game i mean and the other thing is like if they're going to localize it why why don't they change the name yeah true like i don't like really get drum it. drum drum hero or yeah something. exactly yeah. like seriously um whatever uh so anyways, after that, uh, they showed the triangle strategy again. And there's a prologue demo coming out again. I already downloaded it. Have you tried it? I played it for the 30 seconds. I'm going to play it tonight. Okay. And it, it carries c- over to the main game. But the last demo did not. The last demo, I think, I, I didn't play it. I just think it was a random section of the game. Like it was like a battle or two. Where this is actually the first three chapters of the game. Okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going to download it. Yeah, I'm really excited. This game looks like the best mix of Final Fantasy Tactics and Fire Emblem. That I, it's exactly what I want. Yeah, and the trailer they showed, they showed it again, I think, later during the... Um, didn't they? No, this is the only time they showed it. But um, it looks really good. Yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah, the trailer, it's, it's fully voice acted, too. I, I'm, like Even the, the one-minute cutscene, or the one minute I've been playing at the beginning, it's all the dialogue's voice acted. And this comes out, what, March 4th, I think, right? Yep. Wow, so uh, March this and Kirby in March. Power month, I know. Yeah, Even like fe- like the heavy February for like PlayStation, leading into the heavy March for Nintendo. It's gonna be brutal. Yeah, then April with um, you know, Advance Wars and Switch Sports, huge. Yeah, and don't forget May. You got uh, Forspoken, and and strange. <laughs> and don't forget you got Strangers of Paradise. Right, that game's gonna be great too. <laughs> <laughs> When's Babylon Fall? That's the one I yeah, really want. Babylon Fall is the day before Triangle Strategy. I just hope it doesn't get delayed. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope it doesn't get delayed. Uh, I hope it gets delayed till 2023. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, anyways, after that, they showed Cuphead, the delicious last course, which feels like it's been in development for two decades. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't mean to hate on the developer because it's it's really awesome what they're doing but it did take so long to make this i know i'm surprised because i understand the art you know it takes a while but it's not like they put anything else out you know it's like it's been so long like you think there'd be something like or like it's really just just, the same kind of game like (laughs) i'm just curious about it the other thing that really surprised me is if, if how much content's there because if there's a lot of content You've been, it's been long enough that just make a sequel. Just call it Cuphead 2. 
But if you're calling it just DLC, it means there's got it's got to be smaller than the main game, right? And which is kind of like, well, it took you this long. Like, how much content is really in this game? Because even the first game was not that big of a game. It, it, to me, it was big enough. It was perfectly sized for an indie game. Sure. I, I, I'm not saying it was too small or anything, but I'm just saying it's not like one of those... It's not like it's 20 hours, you mm-hmm. know? It's So I'm just curious, if this is DLC, how much shorter is this game? And why didn't they just make it a full-fledged sequel at this point? Yeah, I mean, I wonder if because they're making the show that they didn't, they aren't trying to make an even bigger sequel down the line and kind of use this as a DLC, and then they'll release a game of the year edition and a, and a box edition and this, you know what I mean, and, and kind of go down that road. Yeah, I mean, like just like Shovel Knight, how they milk it for all they can. I'm sure. Yeah, they, yeah, totally. Yeah, it's a little weird. I mean, I'm glad that uh, Hollow Knight's not following that pattern. To- totally because hollow knight i mean they had some free dlc and then the game they're making now was supposed to be the paid dlc but they said no we're gonna put more effort into this we have a lot of ideas we're making a full game yeah um mm-hmm. but anyways i to be honest i don't think i'm gonna get this cuphead dlc i don't i don't i feel like i'm done with the game <laughs> like i i don't no, know I'm, I'm the opposite i mean it depends on the price if this game if it ends up being like 39.99 i'll probably like I'll, I'll wait a long time for it to go on sale um but yeah I, i'm always down for some more cuphead so Hmm. I'll probably wait till the price is right for me. Okay. Um, well, after that, they showed an update for Metro Dread, where they have Dread Mode, which is one hit and you die. Yeah, I expect you to beat that. And then, I mean, you still can save. Um, and then they have Rookie Mode, which looks like it's just, you know, you, you, way easier. Yeah. Um, really, though, the, the real to me, the real challenge in Metroid isn't really just the difficulty of, like, fighting enemies and your, your energy meter. It's also, like, where do you go next? So I wonder if that rookie mode is going to have more help in that in that department. Really? Because the game's pretty linear as is. Yeah, but some people are just so so bad at games. I know. There's actually a um, a game maker's toolkit episode about how that game is structured to be linear. How, I know. How, like, I know. I watched yeah. it. I watched it, and how yeah, it's, it's how it guides you. Mm-hmm. Um, that's part of what I love about <laughs> Metroid Dread, actually. Uh, anyways, moving on. Um, next, they showed Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings are coming to Nintendo Switch Online today. This is pretty predictable because the creator uh, retweeted the Nintendo Direct, and it's only a matter of time before these came. They were on Wii U. Mm-hmm. Um, are you going to play them? Uh, no, I don't even have Nintendo Switch Online anymore. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, moving are on. Are you going to play them? Probably not because I played it on Wii U and I, I wasn't... I'm just not a huge fan. It's a little too old for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do, I do have Nintendo Switch, uh, the expansion packs now, so I'll get be getting the Mario Kart for free. Uh, anyways, what do you mean, mean Mario Kart, Peter? We're not at that. Point. <laughs> well, spoilers. <laughs> anyways, let's move on. After that, they showed uh, Zombie Army for Dead War coming April 26. This is a huge, huge release. Is it actually? No, I've never even heard of it. Okay, I was like, I was like, oh my god, I don't know anything about this game. I mean, were there three others of Zombie Army games? Like, because <laughs> it's number four. Because <laughs> I never, I've never heard I would, of. This. I would love if a, a franchise actually did that, where they it made a, a sequel to a game that didn't exist. <laughs> it's called the Number Two. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like exactly. Why not? That'd be cool. Uh, I know nothing about this one. The trailer shows nothing. So let's move on. Uh, they have Getsu Fuma Den Undying Moon, which comes out today this one looked kind of cool actually it's like a it looked know. like to me it looked like a mix of like a muramasa with like a dark souls that's how i like not a dark souls but like almost like a the difficulty of a dark souls in like a ninja or um like a dead cells but mixed with the like the muramasa kind of style. yeah and um, the muramasa had a beautiful art style mm-hmm. are you so i figured you were gonna buy this hell no not even interested at all wow doesn't this doesn't look the gameplay didn't quite sit right with me. Not that yeah. it's bad. Again, not like bad, just not mine. I mean, I I'm always in the camp where like if it's this kind of indie game, like I need for it to like rise to the heavens from word of mouth before I'm going to even try it. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, there's just too much out out there. Um, especially when the art style doesn't like am- appeal to me immediately. Especially when the, yeah, with the next five months being as disgusting as they are for games. I know exactly. Um, after that, they showed Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaba. I, I honestly don't remember this. This is blended with the game before, and so did Hinokami Chronicles. Do any of these games stand out to you? Or? Uh, no, I know about the Demon Slayer anime. Um, it's, it's big. Is this uh, based on that, though? I, I'm assuming so. Okay. I think the D- Demon Slayer is a, like a manga that then got into like a Netflix 
it's an anime that now is on Netflix and it's like pretty popular. And I think this is just a game. I think it's a. I don't know if it's a fighting game or something, but okay. Well, basically, I mean, they also showed Lego Brawls and Two Point Campus. So they showed these five games kind of in a clip show reel. It's clearly like the dumping ground. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, the games that are good enough to make the direct, but not good enough to get like a spotlight in the direct. Exactly. I, you can start to see that, like some of the thought process to like what they showed off, right? Because like you know they kind of show off good good stuff throughout, but really save the big ones for the end, and then they kind of show the crap right before the good ones at the end. Mm-hmm. They paced it well. I thought it was a good, a well divided up direct. I agree, and I even thought that opening on something like Fire Emblem, Emblem Warriors was was smart because uh, it, it, it gives it some more spotlight. Exactly, it's a new new game, familiar franchise, but it's like it's like a, not a letdown, but it's also not like the most hyped thing either. Mm-hmm. Well, anyways, we're not done. They had two more major announcements. I would say major. Yeah. Uh, the kind of things fans love, um, and the first is Mario Kart Eight Deluxe Booster Course Pass. Which to me, when I first saw it, I, I I didn't know what I was looking at. Like I was like, "What is this?" Like, this oh, the is... moment they talked about Mario Kart, I was like, "It's gonna be a bunch more levels." I, I'm really happy that's what it is. Me too. Um, so a few questions about this. I I tried to look up this information, but do we actually know the confirmed first eight courses? Like, is there a list? So someone someone actually did write it. Um, I, be, I was looking for it. That's the thing. Like I really couldn't find it. If you can find it, can you let me know? Because um, I, I was, I saw that. I just want to know which ones from which which games. It looks like there's two from the uh, in the first pass. There's two from the mobile version. Yeah. Um, um, give me give me like two minutes of scrolling. And I'll find it. Okay. Oh, so so this is what people are predicting based on the the eight pictures of Wave One. Okay. Um, so Paris Promenade, oh. that might be a, a world tour game mm-hmm. a level. Toad Circuit. From Choco Mountain from the N64. Yep. Coconut Mall from the GameCube, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other cup is Tokyo Blur, which, again, I think is a... Um, I think I saw Luigi's Runway from GameCube Double Dash. It's not in the first eight. No? The next one says Shroom, Shroom Ridge, and then Sky Garden from the, the Wii, I think. And then Ninja Hideaway. Hmm. Um, cool. I mean, I, I think this is awesome. It's really cheap, too. $25 for all of them? Yeah, it's. I, I already... I have already purchased it um, for my Switch. Thirty-two dollars, I think, Canadian or something. Yeah, like I get it through the expansion pass, but it's kind of funny because because it stretches over the next two years. If this year ends and I choose not to continue my my expansion pass, then I'll just buy it. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I do wonder how this will work with the online though. Like, what happens if I buy it? Will people who don't buy it play in their own rooms online? Is that how that'll work? Um, I'm I'm betting it's the same with how it worked for the the Wii U, um, where you could choose you could turn it off and on when you went in. Like you could choose with on the Wii U, what the way it worked is if you had the expansion, you could play online with people with the expansion, or you could actually unselect when you played online to not play with those people. Oh, that's how it worked. I thought it was everyone just was able to play them. No, no. If you didn't buy them, you didn't get to play them, and you played online with people who didn't have them. Oh, okay, okay. So maybe it's that same same idea. Yeah, I wonder also if, there, if there's even a way to play just those ones. Well, that'd be weird. Probably not. Yeah, I doubt it. But I again, 40, 48 more levels. Imagine how many... Like, I can't imagine most people that own Mario Kart and are going to... Are still playing it are not going to get this. You yeah. know what I mean? And the fact that they're all classics. They don't quite look as good as the brand new Mario Kart 8 levels. You know, if you look at the graphics in them. Yeah, they didn't look great or it didn't look amazing but i don't think look bad and you know they still have some do they have some time they have like a month for the first eight sure but i just mean you know as they go we don't know how they're all gonna look yeah i mean they look good i guess they are they they, they're more faithful than the recreations in the uh eight i think is the idea Mm -hmm. that's a good way to yeah um yeah they look like they're like almost straight up the same levels yeah i do wish this wasn't coming out so staggered because it feels like i don't know eight courses at a time and then what i'm going to rotate through every other course to hope those eight come up online i don't know um i kind of wish that a bigger chunk of them would come out like it would like at least 16 levels would come out at the beginning yeah i agree i mean in an ideal situation i'd love to have all 48 tomorrow Um, (laughs) yeah (laughs) for for me though i just want everything now um, i want everything now for me what for me, what's fun is, um, like, I have friends that will want to play this. So, you know, every couple of months or whatever, it will be 
um, every four months, I guess. Um, we'll sit down. We'll probably play the Grand Prix together and get the gold trophies, and then we'll play some online and like you know mix up the levels and pick whatever. Um, and the thing that is nice is the more levels I unlock, the more we are likely to just kind of play all the levels, you know, just to have them have more variety because it's just nice to have, you know, not as crazy as it sounds. Like we, I've gotten mm-hmm. I agree. tired of the levels that we've already played. Same. Um, yeah. It's interesting. So there's six packs coming out until the end of 2023. So there's three packs a year. So I guess if the first pack's in March, we expect the next one maybe maybe shadow drop or something at E3 or in the summer, and then the next one in the fall. Yeah, August. And then, yeah, yeah, August, November kind of thing. Yeah, um, which is cool. It's kind of cool. Look, something to look forward to. And I'm I'll be playing a lot more Mario Kart 8. Uh, yeah, me too. Exactly. I'm surprised it took this long. Um, it seems like they should have been doing this years ago. I, I was I've been saying that for years. I know to S- you. Same, same. I mean, it's just it seemed like the obvious thing to do. I'm surprised, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's gonna be huge. I don't know if DLC's ever been mm-hmm. released like this so long after you know a games come out with no mention of DLC. Yeah. Um, but cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm, this is the highlight of the thing for me. I, I'm super excited. Yeah, same. It's it's like it's hard because I'm not like oh yeah, amazing, excited, but it's kind of like something I'm just like oh finally, finally they're doing it. Uh, I mean, it's yeah, an, it's I enough wanna, courses I, for uh, to be a Mario Kart nine, really. <laughs> totally, I'm just excited for some more Mario Kart. But it's funny because or interesting. Uh, I was reading and someone said, you know, if if this is the plan for Mario Kart for the next two years, what is Mario Kart nine going to look like? Because this game, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, is going to have over 100 courses or something ridiculous. Mm-hmm. All A lot of the levels will be, have already been remade. And all, there's a ton of new levels. So what is 9 going to be? How are they going to change it up? Is it going to be all these courses plus more, like a Smash Ultimate? Or is it going to be a um, change of formula completely? Maybe it goes more Diddy Kong Racing where there's hovercrafts and flying and that's how they change it up. Maybe it becomes open world. Like, who, who knows what the different ideas there could be? But people are kind of saying, this might be them saying, hey, like, here's your taste of all the traditional Mario Kart, because Mario Kart 9 is going to be really changing it up. That's an interesting take. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised about that. Um, but, I mean, it's also their biggest cash cow, so I don't know if they necessarily would want to change it up too much. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, who well, knows? I think, I think changing it up like adding planes is not that much. Yeah, true, and it's like, but you think, yeah, that that someone suggested that. I mean, it almost seems like that's exactly what Diddy Kong Racing did. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I really don't know what they would do. It's it's it does seem like one of those situations like Smash Bros. Ultimate now, where like, how, how do you ever top this? Yeah, it's um, like you know, you can bring thirty new levels, but why would I play that when I have a hundred and eight? Exactly. Uh, I do wonder if they're going to uh, introduce more characters, though, because it's why not, right? It seems it seems like it'd be cool <laughs> if there's one or two characters each pack, but I don't know if they'll do that. It'd be a cool surprise. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but it's it does the other thing too across six cups, so it's forty eight new stages. Like that's a lot. That that's a big that's a big chunk. Like you, there's a good chance it's we're going to see new cups. It's twelve twelve new cups. Twelve new cups. So it's forty eight uh, new courses. Yeah. Um, and it's like, so there's a good chance you're probably going to see something you want to see. Is there any big standout so, Mario Kart courses that you want brought back? Um, oh, you caught me on the, on the spot there. I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's always I, I, the, uh, the N64. Uh, I mean, other than Wario's pinball on DS, I, I just default to the I was N64. Gonna say, Waluigi, I didn't Waluigi's pinball. Sorry, yeah, Walu- Waluigi's pinball. A um, uh, wireless stadium for NCT4 is a good one. I was going to say that. Yeah. Uh, I think Bowser's Castle for NCT4 is pretty good. Banshee's Boardwalk is excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a few good ones. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, that's exciting. Um, and also, I mean, I think that it pretty much guarantees that Mario Kart 9 is not coming to, to Switch 1, 1.0. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, 100% guarantees, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, I do wonder though if it will increase the sales. Like the month, every month they come out, it'll increase the sales of Mario Kart. Ooh, I'm even not more. Sure. I, I mean, yeah, the game already is still selling. I'd be shocked if it didn't keep selling. It might not necessarily boost the sales, but it might actually just prolong the 
the the current rate like you know what i mean it'll increase it'll can extend the longevity of it if that makes sense mm-hmm. agreed i mean i can see it from almost selling 50 million copies it's crazy to think that this game is going to be supported for two years of DLC. It's, it's crazy. I, I'm I'm surprised because I remember Mario Kart Wii selling so well, and I was just like, "There's no way um, this is ever going to be topped." And now it's it's, it's like it's so easily topped. You know, it's crazy. Well, the Switch has topped the Wii. I know, I, I, of course. I'm just I'm just saying. I remember when we like Mario Kart Wii had sold like 35 million or 32 million or whatever it was. And I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, there's no way. The next Mario Kart's gonna beat that. Like the Wii is like, the Wii was huge, and the Wii U was out, and I was like, Mario Kart Eight, like it's just not on a good platform. <laughs> and then, mm-hmm. of course, they bring it to the Switch, and it sells better. Imagine somebody made the bet like uh, before it came out on Wii U. They're like, I bet you Mario Kart Eight will sell better. And he's like, No, I no, it won't. He's like, Okay, well, I'll bet you like a, a you know my bike. And then Mario Kart Eight comes out for Wii, and it sells like five million. And he's like, Okay, here's my bike. And then like now, years later, they're like adults. He's showing up at his house saying, I want my I want my bike back. Yeah, there's probably some loophole where it's like it has to be on the Wii U. It has to be it doesn't have the same title. Like, yeah, well, I know. Maybe so they funny. left it open. You never know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So right, last announcement. Last go. announcement was Xenoblade Chronicles Three, which uh, seemed like it was kind of leaked. Like everyone knew it was coming for some reason. Um, yeah, I think they there was a lot of rumors about it. I thought this looked really good. They didn't show the battling at all. They they only gave kind of a, a brief glimpse. But it looks more in line more like with a story, um, a story trailer. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it did show the, the character art, which is, thank God, way better than the last two Xenoblade games. Way, way better. Like probably the best it's ever been. If even included, I mean, it's, the first one's pretty good, but the Chronicles X and uh, Xenoblade Two just not my cup of tea. And this one looks pretty good, cup of tea wise. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it looks great. And the environments look great, and it looks a little bit more akin to Xenoblade Chronicles X. That's like an open world. Rather than the guided sections, like the world looks huge and open. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope that there's like flying and mechs, and they do have some of that. Um, but I don't know. It, it's coming out in September. I, I, I don't. I, I think you're going to be wrong about that. I mean, I think it looks as open as the Xenoblade One and Two do. I don't think it's going to be like X open world. Um, some of the screenshots and the clips that people have examined lead them to believe that. Okay, I mean, uh, who knows? I, I haven't really gone through those threads and looked at what people are saying. But, yeah, I mean, it looks, again, I'm not a big uh, Xenoblade fan. I played the first one in some of X. Um, I like them. It just, the, those are the kind of JRPGs that I don't like when there's like, like you know, 70 or 80 hours and like the story is so complicated and I just, I'm not, that's not for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm. there are a lot of people that are excited for this, so good on you. Yeah, I think I mean it's a it's a triple A big release nonetheless. I, mean, I think it'll be the best Xenoblade. Um, I'm I'm really now excited to add one of these games to our our uh, Metacritic uh, fantasy I was league. Thinking the same thing. We got a few that we could add. Yeah, um, and I think you know what, Xenoblade Chronicles will just be an interesting one. I hope I hope somebody adds it. I don't know if I want to use my one on that, but well, you have to. Tell, I don't think my friends are going to remember to even know that they have that rule to add. So well, I can tell. tell I friends. can tell them. I can message my friends and be like, "Hey, can you use, recommend this to Dirk?" Uh, but anyways, yeah. let's not talk too much about that. Uh, let's talk about the overall. So you said it was a nine out of ten for you, nine point five even. I didn't say nine. <laughs> I know you dropped it to a nine. So it was, yeah, it's it's a very good direct. Um, I would probably give it a eight point five or nine as well yeah it was really good i mean it didn't so at the end of the day it really didn't have anything that knocked it out of the park for me uh again i agree it it missed those four or five games that you and i keep talking about right it missed, missed metroid zelda, it missed zelda metroid. mario it, it and... missed silk song mario it missed teenage mutant ninja turtles like it, it it missed those kind of big games that we keep wanting to see um but somehow that's what i was saying it's like i love this that they showed games that we did not expect. They showed things we did not expect, and they they landed like it. It was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and and you know, even though it didn't, the director maybe didn't announce a lot of big games that I I want to see. There's a ton of Switch games I'm going to end up buying in the first half of the year. If I just look at this list mm-hmm. alone, it's huge. And and I think one of the things, the big takeaways with this is even like you said at the beginning of the podcast, considering Pokemon Arceus Legends just came out, 
Like, this year is going to be disgusting. Especially if there's still games we don't know about coming in the second half of the year. Um, yeah. And with Splatoon landing in fall, and sorry, in the summer, I remember you speculated it might be their big fall release, but no, they announced it's coming in the summer. Mario Strikers is coming in the summer. Uh, Fire Emblem is coming in the in the summer. Um, Even Xenoblade is September, so that kind of raises that point of what is October, November, December. Mm-hmm, exactly. Um, so, anyways, I mean, up until September, very powerful. But mm-hmm. w- w- what do you think? I think they, yeah, I think there still is games. That are still coming this fall. Uh, maybe some of the quote unquote no shows of the direct, um, like the Metroid Prime remake and maybe Breath of the Wild 2. Do you, yeah. Do you still I, I, think. I don't know when those. Yeah. I think something. I mean, there's also Bayonetta 3 to think about. Um, I, mean, I, I think, definitely I think, think Bayonetta more... 3 is definitely second half of the year. Can, I mean, if it's coming this year. Yeah, so I'm, uh, it's not what we're talking about the second half of the year. Yeah, I mean, but I, I don't think that I don't think I just don't think it means that it's in development trouble necessarily that it wasn't shown today. I just think it's. Oh, I, I agree. Yeah, I, I'm just saying I'm talking about like you know, games that could come out in October, November, December. There's quite a few options that we've heard inklings of, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, I don't really know what I put my put my my bet on. I'd like to say Breath of the Wild too, but somehow that always slips past i saw um, some people say that because you know blades coming in september they don't think that breath of the wild 2 is going to come this fall because they're, they're too similar oh they're just two big so, open world games you know like there's mario and rabbits which i think could come this year that it well it was announced for this year you're right i forgot about that one so that i guess that's now yeah. confirmed for second half in a way which is rumored to yeah, me. Yeah, I don't think I, I think it'll be at least July or later. Like I could still see it making July, but I bet it'll be August, September, October. I think it'll come out in September. August, just like the last one. Yeah, I, I could see that happening. Um, I'm just looking through some lists. So like, there are some DLs or like some smaller games. Like there's Ninja Turtles, um, Sea of Stars. Still, there's um, T- Ninja Turtles, Silk Song. If that comes, Blossom Tales Two, Sports Story. I know a lot of people are looking forward to. Um, and then you got the the big games. I, I, I think I don't think we're gonna see any Metroid this year. I think we're gonna see Zelda, um, maybe, or Bayo three, and then maybe a Pokemon game, and you know maybe Silk Song. I think Silk Song actually is, is much more likely than seeing Breath of the Wild. Wow, that'd be huge. I mean, can, but I mean, still, can you imagine a holiday that had like Metroid Prime remake, Breath of the Wild two, and Bayonetta three? Like, that'd be huge. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this year is going to be gross for Nintendo no matter what. Yeah, I agree. Um, but I also think there's a good chance that the hall, the fall game will be like a 3D Mario or a Donkey Kong. Like, Because they still, they always need to have that kind of game for families and for that audience, right? So I, I just don't see the fall being like Xenoblade, Bayonetta, and another and Metroid, you know? Mm-hmm. There's also be a 2D Mario. Yeah, that's very possible too. I mean, but I think it'll I think it'll be something in like the cartoon space, you know. Mhm. Mhm. But yeah, um great direct. What's the next Switch game you're getting then? I guess it's um probably Kirby. Oh, no, Triangle Strategy. Oh, that's right. Yes, yeah, Triangle Strategy. Um Triangle Strategy and Kirby, like the, again, it's like I don't want to buy both those games day, day one, but they're never going to go down in price. Um, I think Octopath is actually still up in price. It's actually gone up in price. <laughs> so, the physical edition. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I just, um, I think I'll get both those games day one and that those will be my, my March games. So I have two games in February for the PlayStation, two in March for the Nintendo Switch. And then April's, who knows what April will bring. April will bring Switch Sports. And yeah, and Advance Wars. Yeah, and Chrono Cross. Um, So I guess, do you think we'll see another Direct, or is it E3 the next? Um, I think, think, honestly, I think E3, I don't think they really need it. Like, they have pretty confirmed dates already and showed stuff. I think what we could get is instead of Directs, we could get, like, um, sometimes they they do those spotlights on certain games, right? Yeah, tweets. I could see, yeah, I could (laughs) see, like, a a Mario Strikers... Like a, a direct for just Mario Strikers, you know? Yeah, uh, good point. Because a lot of these games, actually, yeah, now that you mentioned, will come out before E3. Um, like yeah. Advance Wars and Mario Strikers. And, I, you know, we had a like one of those kind of deeper directs for Mario Golf. 
Mm -hmm. So I I would be I could see one being for strikers. I could see one being for maybe Kirby, but that's coming soon. Like I don't really need to show more. I, I don't know how much more they need to that. tell about Kirby. Yeah. yeah. So I think it'll just be strikers, and I think there might you know they might promote Nintendo Switch Sports, but they don't necessarily need to show a direct on it. And then I think E3. They'll say, hey, Splatoon's coming out in, you know, five weeks, six weeks, or whatever it is, and they'll have to show that, and then they'll talk about their, their fall lineup. Mm-hmm. Which could be anything. Pikmin 4. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I, I want a Pikmin 4. That's a great suggestion. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. At the end of the day, nothing in this direct made me, like, kind of stand up and cheer. No, yeah, ex- I totally agree. Like, there's no hype moment. They didn't even mention, like, Zelda's on its way or anything. But, again, I, I, I like that. I was surprised. They showed games that I didn't expect, and I liked those games that they showed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, same here. I'm definitely going to get a ton, ton of the games on this list. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, Derek. Well, um, I, I haven't, been, haven't been playing much, but have you been? Yeah, I've been playing... Um, I'm trying to think. So... Yeah, there's about two games on the Xbox that I've been playing. Okay. So I beat I beat Psychonauts two. And uh, oh, you went back and I beat played, it. Like you went back. Yeah, and I played the whole. The, yeah, you told me there's some really cool levels later on. I went through and played the whole game. And and I I did not. I, I told you my rating. I did not like it. I gave it maybe a seven point two or something. Okay. Um, I just am, I, I don't know what you saw. I don't know what reviewers saw to give it such a high score. Thaddeus's Thaddeus's game of the year. I just, I just am blown you away think by that. You blown away by that? Okay. It's like to me, it's one. It's there's not a lot of fun to the platforming. It's not like it's challenging or interesting. It's just kind of like oh, like swing across this and jump up, climb up a wall, and then like turn a camera, turn a light beam to shoot, and then just go back. Like you know what I mean? It's not like Mario Odyssey where there's like there's so much kind of free form and, and like you feel so the platforming feels good. Where this game felt very grounded and linear and kind of like there's not a lot to it um and then i also found it was very collecty collecting those kind of like those those drawings all yeah, over like yep, man but- after, after the couple hundred what i don't care the power-ups the upgrades to them didn't really interest me i i kind of stuck with the same three or four the whole time um I didn't. The story, I'm sure, was good, and the the voice acting was good. I didn't. I don't care enough about stories and voice acting, especially since it was a sequel and I never played the original. That I I just skipped through it. The last level, that the one where you're you're on the rails going through like the amusement park. Oh my god, terrible what, way to end the game. You thought you had uh, challenges. I you know what? When I was playing that, I did pretty that well. Challenge is boring. But there was parts where I was like, this is gonna piss people off. Just so boring. It's just boring. Mm. And. Um, I know you. I know there's that level that you like, like the senses one, where it's kind of like far out colors. Mm-hmm. Didn't do much for me, and like the boat level didn't do much for me. Like it, again, I I feel like these, it attempted to be a far out game, like kind of like radical, like kind of wild ideas, but none of the ideas were actually that interesting or far out or wild. Like there are other games out that that are way more like trippy and, and kind of fucking with your mind than than this. I, I again. Not a bad game, but a seven all the way through. Hmm. Well, it's kind of like, and then yeah, yeah. I was gonna say and it's kind of the second oh, game. Sorry, <laughs> no, you, you go. go, you go, you go. I was just saying it's kind of like a um, how you like Ratchet and Clank, and it's kind of you know janky, not the best gameplay. <laughs> I don't think Ratchet and Clank is. Any, I would never describe it. As janky. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I just mean it's, it's that kind of throwback to a different time of. It's it's just a genre that's not tackled much, and that's why I think it gets a little extra, extra benefit of the day. Yeah, let's say. I mean, if people like it, I I mean, I don't have anything bad to say about the game necessarily. Like it's not, it's just not. I would never play the first one now, and I would never play the third one. Wow, it's cra- it's crazy uh, how it has like you know an eighty seven on Metacritic. I I think it's appalling that it has a higher Metacritic than Returnal. I think that's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Metroid like, Prime, Metroid I, I, Dread breeds both I, of them. I, I mean, Metroid Dread. At least I can, I can understand because I, I, it wasn't the right one for me. But that game is a really good game. It just, I liked other Metroids more. But I can see that that it could win Game of the Year and, and be loved. Mm-hmm. But for me, like how, how people found Psychonauts again, not a bad game, better than like one of the best games of the generation. It will be Returnal. I, I just don't get it. 
Well, fair, fair. Um, you, what else have you been playing? Let me t- so the other the other game I've been playing is um, again on Xbox. I've been playing another Insomniac game of all things is um, Sunset Overdrive. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I, I mean, it's you can see where the Insomniac kind of influences are going through it. Um, there's it, a, I have some issues with it. It's I don't weirdly know if I'll, I'll stick around. For it's it. weirdly low resolution, right? Like, do you notice that? Yeah, and I, it is for sure. I also find it, it 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 kind of like wants to be this game where it's like fluid and you're jumping all over the place and grinding and stuff. But I find it actually pretty slow. Like I feel like if you're if you miss uh, miss a grind, you just like are walking. Like it's not it doesn't feel kind of like you can slide and dash around and it's, it, it doesn't feel very quick. Mm-hmm. But I think the game wanted to be quick, so that's kind of my biggest gripe with it. Um, yeah, I'll probably play for a bit more, but I don't think I'll, I'll see it to the end. You know what I was thinking about uh, with something with has to do with that is that the the controls in a third person shooter mixed with a platformer that no one's really nailed that yet, and I think the main thing is you you really have to map the jump button and the control buttons to the to the shoulder buttons so that you can continue to use the camera while you're aiming to shoot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's exactly what that's exactly what you should do if you ever play Returnal. The moment you turn the game on is switch put your dash and jump on L one and R one. It. It, I, I, it makes the game. Yeah, I mean, well, th- is that not the default controls? No, it, X is jump and circles dash. Okay, yeah, like because the thing is, you know, you need to be able to aim and move, and I just think that's kind of a fundamental flaw in a lot of third-person action shooters. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's something like Resident Evil Four, or like a really tight shoot where you're more shooting than you are platforming. It makes sense. But on a game where you're, you know, supposed to be running and jumping and, and like looking this way and that way and dr- grinding on rails and looking for the next thing to to, to pop on, uh, I don't know. So it, it works yeah. if you're really good at it. But I, I find I've been using uh, claw my claw hand a lot more than I want to recently because you know any game where you have to where you have to hold down a, a button to move, you then can't move the camera right. Yeah. So, so like in GTA and a lot of those games where I'm driving, I'm I'm literally claw handing the the acceleration while moving the camera. Oh, I, I refuse to claw hand. If it doesn't work, then I would I would stop playing that game. Well, I mean, even even claw hand is it so claw hand is so uncomfortable. But even like Breath of the Wild has that problem a little bit, right? Where if you're riding the horse and you want to keep pressing the a, the A button to f- make it go fast, you then have to take your finger off the the camera controls. Yeah, but to me, I would just re- I would just recenter it and then just press A A A A A and then recenter. Like that's not a big deal. True. Yeah. To um, me, for it's for games like you know Returnal and Sunset Overdrive where you have to constantly be using your camera and constantly be shooting and constantly be jumping and dashing. That's the kind of game where like there's no other way to play it. So if it was clawed, I, I would just stop playing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. I mean, uh, I mean, I still, I still think Sunset Overdrive is fun, uh, but I mean, it, me too. It, I, I'm it, still playing it. It probably was better at the time and the place. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Uh, I mean, now that so many other games have surpassed it, and it does. It, I also don't really love the story or the style, which feels like it's trying so so hard to be cool, but like, but yeah, like, edgy, yeah, yeah, like, but in the wrong way. Um, like, I don't even know. I, I don't like it for that reason um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so i don't know I, I actually really haven't been playing much i've been playing forza horizon still i love that game you love it wow it's really it's it's such a good game to play for like 20 minutes or for two hours like i am so into it do you play online no i just honestly i don't even do i don't even do races i just pick my fastest car and i just like blitz down the highway like i just have fun just driving quickly yeah and like going across the fields and stuff yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's fun. There's um, there's a type of uh, events that you can do that like takes you uh, like bat- off roading, which is really fun. Like I would do, I would just yeah, do those I events. like that. I'm usually the opposite. I, I like the ones where I'm on the the track and there's very few turns. You're just like going like 240 kilometers an hour or miles mm-hmm. per hour. Yeah. Well, I don't really have much else to talk about this week, Derek. Um, good good direct day. Yep. Yeah, good directed. That was a fun podcast. Yeah, and it was a good directed. Lot. I feel feeling good. I'm feeling happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm worried about some of my my score predictions, but otherwise, I'm feeling good too. Yeah, I'm I'm worried for you too. Uh, okay, Derek. <laughs> well, uh, this is Peter signing out. And this is Derek. See you later.